Welcome to Near Mint Condition, a channel where you can be part of a positive, honest community and lay claim to some comic book knowledge. I'm your host, The Astonishing Melanie, and to celebrate Godzilla, the original Marvel Years Omnibus coming out on October 1st, 2024, I'm going to do an overview of Godzilla, King of Monsters, the facsimile um, edition of the first issue. So stay tuned. This video is sponsored by Marvel Comics, so thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us uh, copies of the first issue. If you've never bought a facsimile, um, let me explain that it is reprinting exactly what was published in 1977. So as you can see here on the back, it's the old school way of doing ads. So you get the double treat of reading about this crazy kaiju story, but you also get to sift through the cheesy mail-away product ads. The story takes place over the course of 24 issues, and it's written by Doug Minch, who is the creator of Moon Knight and Deathlock, uh, wrote on Inhumans, Fantastic Four, and Quasar, plus others, um, and he does the whole run. Herb Trimpey, who drew Hulk for years, and Iron Man and Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., drew the majority of the issues on this run. And Jim Mooney, who has worked on many titles as Spider-Man, inked this issue. So let's jump in and see what the creators bring to the table when they bring this epic kaiju to life in the Marvel Comics format. Before we jump into the story, I'd like to show you a couple of options you have for the uh, covers. So here we have the first issue cover um, by Herb Trempy, but you could also get a Chromium Edition cover, which I am definitely a sucker for. That thing is really nice. And there's also a Mark Bagley variant. My boy Mark Bagley, he's an integral part of my Spider-Man childhood. The basic plot of the first issue is that Godzilla has awakened after being frozen in ice and wreaks havoc on the Alaskan pipeline. In the fashion of storytelling of the day, we are privy to the thoughts of the first person to encounter Godzilla, basically narrating his own actions as he runs for help. I love how the font of the words, oh no, are smaller than usual, and the reptilian face is looming behind him. That was a really cool panel. This is a lot of fun to read. In fact, indulge me for a moment and let me read to you these bottom two panels. Sometimes, it seems, prayers are answered. Panting, his heart pounding, the terrified keeper bolts into the only available refuge along the barren shoreline, dot dot dot, his home. But it does him very little good. For the almost legendary time-lost Leviathan known as Godzilla has just arrived in North America with a vengeance. I was like, oh snap, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Honestly, if I had felt bad because he was just praying and I was like, oh, he died. <laughs> but, oh, oh, okay, he's okay, he's okay. As a side note, I love this close up of the monster's eyes. The loud, confident, and over the top character, Dum Dum Dugan, is placed in charge of the Godzilla Resistance Unit by Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., who is busy flying in Dr. Taki Guichi to help. Dr. Taki Guichi was against the nuclear undersea testing years ago that awoke Godzilla, and he continues to work to minimize the damage the creature unleashes. The bulk of the issue focuses on Dugan's attempts to bring down the rampaging creature. His first attempt is to deploy the Angel Squad in this terrific splash page of high-tech planes and weaponry mounted on flying platforms. Uh, they fail. But as soon as he flies in to attack... Chomp. I like the comedic timing of this panel and how his previous close-up and heroism is literally minimized in terms of the size of the art, but also in relation to the single swift action of Godzilla just closing his mouth. Good thing the monster conveniently took a bite of the plane that did not contain Dugan. Firefighters fly in for the attack, to no avail. And lastly, Dugan shoots him with a laser cannon. I love Godzilla's face here when he gets shot. I wonder how you would pronounce this sound effect. Jure. After they endure the kaiju's rampaging a bit more, Nick arrives, and I like the addition of the puff of smoke in the panel. I can imagine the artist being like, and the finishing touch? There, cigar smoke. My work here is done. Even Dugan was graced with flourishes of cigar smoke when he was flying his craft. Nick introduces the doctor, his assistant, and his grandson to Dugan. But the commander is not happy at all that he couldn't bring down Godzilla. In fact, he scoffs at the idea that Dr. Takiguichi could succeed where he failed. 
The doctor explains that he has a secret weapon, but you have to read the following issues to find out what it is. Minch employs many literary devices in his writing, such as metaphors, alliteration, and imagery in the, in the words alone. I mean, I know there's images, but in the words alone, so not counting the art. So, for example, um, the Alaskan pipeline is compared to a serpent for a metaphor, and there is alliteration in this yellow narration box before the shock of his berserk fury demands to be felt. So you've got your, the words fury and felt with those F sounds at the beginning for alliteration. Y'all didn't know you were going to get an English class lesson, did you? In fact, next school year, I'm excited, I'm going to give my creative writing students lines from this and have them write a snippet of a story or draw a picture of it. L listen to this. Toughly competent, able-bodied men are helpless in the midst of such random havoc, reduced to no more than tiny figures of scurrying panic. They could even rewrite it with the same sentence structure, but choose different words to create a different image. I can't wait. I've never read Doug Minch before, and I'm going to check out Moon Knight. If it's like this, um, I'm all in. Another note about the writing style, the narrator responds to and plays off of what the characters say. For example, a character, um, perhaps Dum Dum, uh, he's too small to see, proclaims that the monster is spitting fire like a dragon, and the narration box reads, Indeed, but a dragon of science, not fantasy, for it is the fire of radioactivity which bursts from the monster's gaping maw. Another thing that's fun to read is all the idioms and colloquialisms that Dum Dum Dugan uses, such as, of all the tin-plated gall, there he goes off into the blame sunset as if he owned it, and here we are, standing with our thumbs in our ears. Godzilla was a fun read, and you could pick up the first issue at your local comic book store or order the omnibus that's coming out October 1st, 2024. You have your choice of three different covers. The first direct market cover is by Herb Trampy, who is the artist of this first issue, and it is the cover of the first issue. The second direct market cover is also drawn by Herb Trampy from issue number four, and it features Godzilla battling Batragon. And the standard edition cover is by Yoon Gyeon Yoon. And this is the cover that will be available everywhere. And that's it. What are your thoughts on the series? Did you happen to read it as it was coming out? Uh, which omnibus cover do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. Thank you to Marvel Comics for sending us copies of this first issue to do an overview to give you guys a tease and a taste of what you can expect in the omnibus. Don't forget to smash the like button on your way out. And as always, stay minty.